It's Wednesday, the 28th day of March 2012. Welcome to another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up tonight, Michigan militia are cleared of plotting to overthrow the government despite massive undercover FBI operation. You'll see the footage where I predicted that the feds were preparing to set up Hutari and had infiltrated the group. Then, U.S. military funds effort to hack video game consoles. Then in medical news, a new Superman drug has been found that allows humans to add muscle at an incredible rate. It's been going on for weeks, and now the booms are getting louder. They've returned to Clintonville. We'll report. Meanwhile, one lonely senator stands in the way of war. Rand Paul is blocking sanctions that he says could lead to war with Iran. And then finally, best-selling author and anti-globalist researcher David Icke will join us for an in-depth interview. The thing that people need to understand more than anything else is all this conspiracy, all this enslavement. It is not a bloody game. It's real. And if we don't uh, focus on that and focus our lives on it, we're going to regret it for the rest of our lives. First off tonight, we're going to look at the Hatari militia. This has been going on for a few years. And uh, here's the headline. Michigan militia are cleared of plotting to overthrow the government despite massive undercover FBI operation. And it turns out there was an FBI agent inside the group. That's just the patsies they arrested on screen. And at least one informant. This is the type of uh, operation they run routinely just to create headlines about domestic groups that want to kill police. Turns out none of them ever on the tapes talked about killing police. The FBI agent informant got them to talk about during a total collapse if the government tried to come and take their private property or enslave them, that they might have to defend themselves. We have that discussion every day on the radio. And we're seeing some good action out of the federal judge. They had one federal judge uh, a year or so ago say the case was bull, and now this judge is ordering all the major charges dropped, except for weapons charges. And I've seen this before with the Branch Davidians. Walter Smith, the federal judge, ran their criminal trial. And when they were found not guilty of killing federal agents and all this garbage, then they said, but you're found guilty of using guns in the commission of killing federal agents. But they were found not guilty. The Supreme Court ruled to release them, and the Justice Department didn't. It took them four years, and then in another case, six years, to finally release people who were total bystanders and weren't involved in any of it on record. So don't think the Hatari will be getting out anytime soon uh, because the feds basically do whatever they want. The courts uh, be damned sometimes. But let me give you now the rest of the story. I saw a video close to a year. It was like, what, nine, ten months before Hatari got busted with a guy in a mask, with a helmet, with a machine gun, with a guy behind him wearing a gas mask. And I said on air, it turned out this guy was part of Hatari. I said, if this isn't a government setup, I don't know what is. This looks exactly like the grandson of the former head of the ADL, Adam Gadon, formerly Adam Perlman, who's the head of Al Qaeda now. And we've, of course, caught the government uploading the Gadon videos with the Al Qaeda logo and the government logo in the same video layer. <laughs> they made it. <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing how dumb they think the public is. And, and since then, that's come out that, that not just that guy, but Anwar al and others are government agents. When I saw this, my gut, which is just my subconscious mind, much more powerful than my conscious, immediately said, that's it. The, the, you know, this is some type of setup. Either this guy was paid to do this by somebody who was directing it, uh, or he's an informant or an actual uh, agent, but, but definitely an asset. And I called him out. And, and that's in a previous video to the August 17th, still months before Hatari got raided. And they weren't even using the name Hatari then. And we've got articles uh, that uh, break all of that down. But I want to go ahead and go to a clip where I am interviewing the guy that went by Pale Horse, Christopher Sickles, uh, is his uh, real name, who ended up being arrested along with the rest of Hatari. And again, 
I've never before or since pointed at a militia group and said that's an infiltration setup out of thousands of groups. I saw this, it popped out like a Cracker Jack, danger Will Robinson, and I broke it down and was confirmed to be accurate. And something else happened. When I exposed that they were setting up Atari, a bunch of militia groups around the country attacked me. This is how you get the operatives to come out. Those are the federally run or infiltrated groups who don't want me there warning people. I'm all for the militia. I'm just trying to teach folks how to not get set up by letting your group be infiltrated and people trying to get you to do illegal stuff. And of course, feds are they're gonna scream and go, no, don't listen to that. Let's meet secretly and build pipe bombs. The militia's in the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. It's in the Tenth Amendment. I mean, it's all there enshrined in the Second Amendment more than even other areas that we have this basic right uh, to defend ourselves. I mean, the sheriff's posse uh, is part of the militia system, civil defense. But when you want to creep around secretly, that's where the feds operate. So it also drew them out of the woodwork, and I've been proven right again. So let's go ahead and go to that video clip. Months and months before, look at the dates, before they actually set up Atari and brought them down. Here it is. Uh, Mr. Palehorse, uh, good to have you on with us. Thank you. Uh, this is an honor, definitely. Now, why are you not protecting your uh, voice uh, here on the radio? Well, really, you know, I, I get a lot of things on YouTube. Uh, oh, the government knows who you are. You know, why are you covering your face? Why are you disguising your voice? And really, it was more, you know, I know the FBI and whoever wants, if they want to know who I am, they know who I am. And it was more or less as, you know, just to give the video mystique. And clearly it worked because I ended up on, uh, you know, corporate news. So, Well, let me just be honest with you here out of the gates. I told my staff as soon as they saw this last Thursday when you emailed us, well, I'd seen it Tuesday and Wednesday on national television everywhere, but then I actually watched some of your videos even before to ascertain and really assess from my research who and what you are. And uh, then you contacted us and I said, I need some more time to look into this, but either you were doing this to get attention, knowing that putting this mystique on it, as you call it, would make the media pick up on what you were saying because it was useful to them or you are a Adam Gadon type fed or foundation hired person meant to make the militias look dangerous and fringe and bad uh, listen I'm not trying to I'm, listen you may be a nice guy and talking to you now I'm not saying you're bad and we all learn we all try we all grow and so I'm just asking you this question. When you saw yourself on national television, on ABC and Fox and everywhere else, why do you think out of all the militia videos out there, they chose you? I would say because the fact that my face is covered and because the scary voice modulator that I had on there, because it's kind of saying, you know, this could be anybody, this could be your neighbor, you know what I mean? And, uh, it's easy to point the finger at a guy with no face rather than, you know, a specific person. Absolutely. I mean, you notice when we posted your video, we didn't make a judgment. We said, yeah. here's what Pale Horse has to say. It's just right. here on air, I'm trying to flesh this out. I'm not making a judgment of you. I'm telling you, we said either this is a guy who wanted to get his message out and knew this would be spooky and it would, which you're saying is the case, and I tend to believe you, or... This is ADL, Southern Poverty Law Center, or actual federal government. Because the lighting, the way you have your, your lieutenant behind you, him wearing the gas mask, this is exactly how the feds would do it. I mean, this is, this is directly with the proven fake Al-Qaeda videos and Adam Gadon and all of these. This is directly out of central casting what you did. So you are a talented guy. Uh, the way you did this, you know, with your, again, you look like a bad guy from a James Bond publication, uh, from a James Bond movie. My issue is, I've always told the militia, you're constitutional, you're wonderful, you're the salt of the earth, we should be mainline and run for sheriff and have it be shooting enthusiast clubs, so any group that's hiding in secret and telling you to sneak around in the bushes with them, though, is going to be filled with feds, and they're going to try to provocateur you.
Now, again, months before I'd attacked the group saying clearly they're feds, I was being nicer there, but you can find all those videos on YouTube. The opposite of people wearing masks and, and, and in the video you saw, you didn't hear the audio, but he's like, attention feds. It's all designed to make militias look silly, whether he meant that or not. But it turned out there had been multi-year-long investigations of the group he was in before I ever even covered it. So we know infiltration is there. Out of over 2,000 militias, how did I call it? I just, I could see it, the central casting. Now, the opposite of these militias that are kind of in fantasy land doing all this is the groups that go to public events with M16s and 45s on their side. And the cops come over years ago and would actually arrest them and they would beat them in court. And now folks everywhere are open carrying and going through the attacks to prove my second amendment is legal, stop acting like it's illegal. Like 20 years ago, everybody had guns in their gun rack. Cops kept pulling people over, harassing them. People backed off, acted like their guns were dirty. Now the guns are back in the gun racks. That's how you do it like I'm doing. I mean, I've got quite a few firearms. We'll just leave it at that. I can skin a buck, run a trot line. Folks, I can shoot through the same hole at 200 yards with my Remington 700. I'm all into guns. I'm all into using them to defend myself. But that's for later if we fail. And they try to you know, come arrest us and put us in these FEMA work camps. I don't want it to go to that. I don't want it to go to that. I want to fight now with ideas because the pen is mightier than the sword before we get to this and it's always fed run groups who are like shut up jones the time for talking's over time to start killing and i'm like really you wouldn't be allowed to say that unless you were a fed i remember every week for more than a decade hal turner in fact pull this up i forgot to tell you before the show uh hal turner uh fbi informant national security hal turner white supremacist, all this stuff, he, he'd get up on the radio and go, Alex Jones is a traitor, he's not for war. I say, you know, murder all these judges, this is Hal Turner saying this for the Southern Poverty Law Center, ADL, or Media Matters, cuts it out of context. Hal Turner, the FBI operative, national security level, highest level operative, not agent, but operative, national security run out of the president's office. That came out in federal court. He pled it, it was true, Fed still sent him to jail, flushing their own turd. I hate to be gross, the only way to describe him though. A turd is still a turd by any other name. So you've got all of this going on. There's Infowars.com, you can click Chicago. Uh, oh really, the link is dead when you click Chicago Breaking News Center. That's why we tend to write our own articles and save that. Well, it's in the federal court record. Uh, the point is that it came out in federal court, the feds admitted, yes, he's our national security asset. The issue was he'd threatened state judges and said, kill them, and the states went after him. So the feds had to take control of it to then manage it. But the point is, this guy, how did I know for a decade he was a fed? And anytime I'd get a call on air, you traitor, you don't want to kill all the black people. You're not like the great Hal Turner. I would say, number one, I don't want to kill all the black people or kill all the Jews or you know gas the Mexicans or whatever, like this guy's saying every day. Number one, that's not what I'm into. Number two, if he wasn't a Fed, he wouldn't be allowed to say that. And then people got sick of him and hacked his email, and it's all him with the FBI. Oh, I'm going to set this person up. Oh, don't worry. I'm saying all this rhetoric. We're going to catch more of these people. He was a total Fed, but not just to bust dangerous radicals that are going to do violence. He was there. They, they had him there to stir everybody up and try to actually get the violence going. See, it wasn't the feds posing as this, because there were real cases with, with, with him and others where stuff actually happened and they did nothing. It was only once he was blown as an asset that he was like used toilet paper and they wanted to get rid of him. You understand how this works? It's the same thing with a lot of these black radicals saying kill the whitey and Mecha and groups like that. It's all meant to get everybody stirred up fighting with each other instead of the globalist, instead of the little man behind the curtain. They want to put us in a gladiatorial ring, like this table right here, and get us fighting with each other. I mean, it's so elementary. It's to fight and conquer. And so when somebody was always calling me out because I wasn't for violence or offensive war, that's because they're trying to stir up some type of violent event. The feds have got to stage their own Oklahoma so they can demonize all opposition to their tyranny. Let's certainly not carry one out for them. 
<laughs> I mean, this is so simple. And I told you Hal Turner was an FBI agent. I told you that over and over again. He was above that. He was a national security asset operative. National security level, above FBI. And who did he work for? He was a producer for Sean Hannity. Number two radio show in the country. There it is. Documentation emerged in 2008 exposing Turner as a... FBI operative, Hal Turner, rise in fame as a most blatant hate talk radio host, self-proclaimed neo-Nazi anti-Semite who hinted at the need, he didn't hint, he said kill him, to eradicate Jews. Turns out to have been fronting as a typical FBI COINTELPRO sting operation, writes Richard Evans. Hackards, again, got into his, uh, his email. No, he was saying kill judges, kill people. This is what they do. So I know it when I see it, and thank God the Hatari, they just got them on, on a drive to some machine gun shootout you know, contest thing in Kentucky. They, the, they got them to say, yeah, we may have to have war with them if they attack us. Well, it's not illegal to say if Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia came to America that we're going to resist tyranny. Somebody tries to illegally arrest you without a warrant, tries to use NDAA on you, a whole bunch of states are passing laws or have already passed laws saying if the feds come to the police and say secretly arrest Alex Jones or somebody else, don't just say no, arrest them. Torture is illegal, even if the feds say it's okay. Secretly arresting people and disappearing them into black holes, illegal. I don't care if you pass some Cracker Jack law, you got out of a Cracker Jack box. Again, you can read Kurt Nemo's original article, The Strange Case of Christopher Sickles and the Atari Militia. Whew, man, I've, try, uh, I've tried to fight these people for 17 years. I mean, back when I would have like movie events at the Alamo Draft House, a few times a year showing films, I'd be signing DVDs and twice, guys that were obviously cop builds would come up. I could assess them, you know, that's, that's a cop. Kind of like driving down the road, you see some chick in a miniskirt sticking her hips out by the side of that, well, that's a hooker, you know. Drive by a lake, a bunch of ducks swimming around, that's a duck, you know. And they walk up and they go, listen, things are getting really bad. How about we just go down and start shooting some police? How's that? I'm like, you, you, you can't do better than that? Hey, guys, get, get a camera, follow this guy out to his unmarked police car. Oh, you're running. Yeah, you better get out of here. I mean, listen, let me tell you how criminal the government is, okay? Not the whole government, but the people at the top. And you got good people in the police and, and FBI and others right next to the criminal divisions that actually carry out the evil. I was trying to build a veteran, a new house, and I got sucked into this. It wasn't my PR idea. This guy calls me. He says, I'm a World War II veteran, decorated, uh, Joe Campana. I've lived here. I don't have any money. My family's all dead. And they're trying to take my property. And it was on a street that was gentrifying in Hyde Park, actually where my mother grew up, a few streets over. And he owned like an acre. And they wanted to take it and build a high rise there, you know, a bunch of condos, we later learned. And it turned out it was right. And he goes, they're trying to bulldoze my house tomorrow. And I'm like, all right, I'll uh, be out there. I get there. They got the bulldozer. They're going to bulldoze it. I, 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 I'm on my radio show via the phone, my daytime show. Listeners show up. Cops show up, and the cops don't want to have something on their hands. It was reasonable human beings. You know, they were like, hold on. Uh, they check the permits. You know, come back tomorrow. The bulldozer operator, when he realizes what's going on, he doesn't bulldoze the house. And then, this is how I got into this. We're like, we're going to fix the house. My listeners are. And the city's like, no, it's condemned. You can't. Now, there it is, Austin American Statesman. And the guy living in a shack. By the way, it turned out we learned for a decade he hadn't been getting his VA benefits. Didn't know how to fight the bureaucracy, so his money hadn't been coming. He picked up cans all over that area of North Austin and lived off ramen noodle and a little garden he had. No money. Turned out he had all these silver stars, you name it. I mean, he, he was like in the Pacific Theater, atomic testing veteran. And, and he died a few years after we built him a new house. But the point is, so he said, okay, we'll build him a new house, was the idea of listeners. And a city record, 14 days, permitted it. Because first the city was against it, but after everybody showed up. 
in the middle of him building his new house, one of these uh, undercover cops shows up. And it turned out they were involved all the local mafia groups and government wanting that property. They'd already decided they were going to get it. And they tried to, like, first get me to talk about killing police for no reason. And then they tried to start, start fist fights while the media was there all in setups. I mean, this is how dirty tricks works. And I'm like, to the cops off duty, I mean, undercover, I'm like, we can't even build a veteran a house and you guys are out here doing this? Technically, it was 14 days to build it. I don't like the unluckiness of 13 days, but I guess America's 13 colonies. But look, <laughs> anyways, there was a debate about whether it was 13 or 14. I said, let's just go with 14. And it's not lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me it was 13. I remember all that. So much of this show, Teleprompter Free, it's just me going back to the archives of my memory. Um, now, there's Joe Campana right there. Right over there. And it turned into this big media circus. And for me, that's a microcosm that we had to go through. The cops trying to set us up. First, the cops stopped them bulldozing the house. That was good cops. Then bad guys come in and try, who are from the bad units and try to set us up. And then they're going to bulldoze it anyways. We stand in front of the bulldozers. You make a movie out of this. And then suddenly all the city council people and veterans were groups were there acting like it was their idea once it was all done. I mean, that's just a microcosm of people in the wrong can't stand up against men who are in the right who keep on a coming. Another great annal from the adventures of my life. Okay, continuing here, um, getting into other news, because I've spent way too long on that. My earpiece is itching like the devil, man. Wow. <laughs> like they dipped it in itch, itching salts or something. Oh, this is a communal earpiece? I told everybody, buy like 20 earpieces and have them hung on the wall for Aaron and others when they do it. I'm not even a clean freak, but give me a break. I mean, I mean, it's kind of creepy sticking this in my ear here, now knowing where it's been. Aaron, uh, we've got McBreen in here. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's unsanitary. I've told him about 20. How many earpieces we got around here? You know what I call it around here when they don't do it? I ask them over and over again, even though they're great. I call it victories. They're little victories against me. I'm like, hey, these pieces are $10 a piece. Buy 20 of them. They're like, we're not doing it, pal. It's not going to happen. <laughs> That's just the way it is. So shut up. We're going to show you who's boss around here. <laughs> oh, man. All right, continuing. U.S. military, and we're going to get Burmese on about this because he's the guy that sent us this article and he's all into it. U.S. military funds effort to hack video game consoles. Really, they're going to hack themselves. Connect, made by Microsoft, is all about dominating society. It's all about... tracking and control. Of course, they want to use it in drones. Of course, they want to use it in face scanning crowds because it's Microsoft isn't giving us this high tech NSA technology for nothing. This can see through walls in your house, voice print, face print. It's total control. We're just inviting this in. The new Samsung TVs are coming out, tracking everybody, listening to everything you're doing in your home. Google admits they're doing it. Big Brother's on steroids in your face, like the CIA director admitting everything you're doing in your house is being watched. Now, here's a really wild article we talked about in the little promo intro. Super strength substance, closer to human trials, myostatin. And it is some type of, I guess, manipulated synthetic hormone that just makes your, your muscles continually grow out of control even more than antibiotic steroids. And it's going to be great for folks with muscular dystrophy and all these other problems. And it's going to be great for livestock to get more meat. But what are the side effects going to be? I mean, Schwarzenegger can barely walk and, his, you know, had his, had his heart out a couple times, you know, trying to live. So uh, more of the life extension technology, really a Superman drug. You know what? If I want to get bigger muscles, I'm going to run upstairs and lift weights. I don't want bigger muscles. I want to lose weight. But the point is, is that, uh, the, you know, they sell all these great things. It's wonderful. But who knows what is really behind it? But that is an interesting little tidbit of news. Continuing here, mysterious booms. Return to Clintonville, and they're a lot louder this time. But the government first said they weren't happening. When seismographs picked them up, they said earthquakes. 
Now they're just saying we're removing the equipment. Don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. City officials, not servants, have hoped to bring closure to the mystery after U.S. Geological Survey reported that the town had suffered a 1.5 magnitude earthquake on Tuesday of last week. However, residents reacted with skepticism, noting that the booms occurred before the earthquake and were also felt 80 miles away in a different towns. So, hey, don't be conspiracy theorists. Your house shakes every night. Government said, forget about it. They've been caught lying thousands of times. Believe them. Take more vaccines. Eat more GMO. D believe known liars. Be trendy. Don't be a conspiracy theorist. Go along with the system. <laughs> Every week or so, I learn of someone's girlfriend or friend who's young getting cancer. One of our crew's girlfriend just got cancer at a young age. It, you know what? It's part of the freedom. Go with it. Don't ask questions. <laughs> they care about you care about you. I want to help you. And now before we go to break and come back with the one, the only, love him, hate him, he's thought-provoking David Icke. And now for our quote of the day before we talk about World War III, Lord Acton, who said power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, here's another quote. The issue which has swept down the centuries and which will have to be fought sooner or later is the people versus the banks or the money changers not your local bank that actually loans you some money, but the mega banks that issue the money. That's the issue. Double entendre. Now, one more piece of news here before we go to break. Rand Paul stands between U.S. and war with Iran. And Rand Paul right now is blocking sanctions that really have war powers hidden into them. Senator blocked sanctions bill saying it could be used as a means to go to war, Paul's one-sentence amendment reads to clarify that nothing in the act shall be construed as a declaration of war or the authorization of the use of force against Iran or Syria, where our government runs al-Qaeda. Our founding fathers were quite concerned about giving the power to declare war to the executive, Paul said on the Senate floor. They were quite concerned that the executive could become the king. Our old friend Rand Paul there. Okay, the one, the only, love him, hate him, he gets you thinking. From Hawaii, straight ahead, we're going to do a long, extended, candid interview with David Icke. He says it's time to wake the bloody hell up. This is not a bloody game, and I agree with him. This is life and death, sudden death overtime with a new world order. But we're in the fight. Stay with us. our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube. And you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get 
people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important, but we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report, and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you gonna join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. Welcome back to this special edition of InfoWars Nightly News, special because we've got one of my favorite guests, always intriguing and thought-provoking, David Icke. Uh, he's out in Hawaii. He's speaking this Saturday, and he's got some interesting observations. He's being protested. Groups don't want him to, to speak. Uh, I also, just before we uh, went on air here, uh, brought up any TSA adventures he's had. He's going to discuss it all, and then I'm going to talk to him about the New World Order throwing everything in our face. They're now admitting that they don't just have life extension technologies, they have age reversal systems. Uh, they're admitting that, oh, your appliances do have hidden tech in them to spy on you. Why are they throwing it all in our face right now? I, I have my own ideas, but we'll get David Icke's take on that. But he is uh, visiting now here in the 50th state, Hawaii. David joining us via audio Skype. Great to have you, David. Cheers, Alex. Well, uh, how was your trip out there? What's your view on the TSA? Well, it's uh, three quarters around the world for me, <laughs> so it was a long trip, but uh, I did experience the TSA uh, one or two times already, uh, both in Los Angeles and then moving around the islands here. And, um, you know, it was it was it was fine. I had to pat down and, and uh, got, uh, uh, you know, through and all the rest of it. But what shocked me, Alex, and what is, uh, shocks me every time I come to America and indeed, you know, some other countries that have these full body scanners is to stand there in the line, you know, shoes off, belt off, all this stuff. And while that's going on, you're watching parents take the children through these full body scanners. It is extraordinary. And, you know, we can discuss various definitions of child abuse, but I would say that the ignorance uh, of um, subjecting your children to this radiation every time they go through an airport with no question, come on, honey, quick, and there you go, and all this stuff, no question, no thought, no um, uh, question about what the effect on the child might be. And of course, radiation has a greater impact on children for various uh, uh, genetic medical reasons. It's just extraordinary to me how uh, asleep people can be. And you know, people talk about ignorance being bliss. Well, ignorance is bliss, but only for a while, because ignorance always catches up with you. And, and you know, ignorance of, of this um, 
the impact of these radiation scanners is going to catch up with enormous numbers of people. The, the frequent flyers, which, of course, you, you have so many in America, they are picking this stuff up all the time, day after day after day. And the cumulative effect is going to be devastating. But how parents can just uh, allow that to happen to their children is just absolutely extraordinary to me, beyond words. David, can you imagine 10 years ago if we would have told people they're going to put you in naked body scanners, shave a naked image of you, which they've been caught doing, lying, of course, and parents are going to let their children be separated from them, scared, and have men and women, in some cases different sex even, literally going in the pants and taking babies' diapers off. I mean, it is beyond dark satire that somebody like Kurt Vonnegut or Robert Heinlein would write in their dystopic, you know, futuristic uh, systems. And we see things like 1984, The Running Man. All of this is really being used as a template. And they've had top psychologists you know, point out, as you know, that this groping universally, not just in the U.S., but in England and other areas now, is training children to have people touch them in a way that previously, you know, you say, you know, stranger, danger, bad man, bad woman, don't touch me. This is literal pedophile training, and they know exactly what they're doing. And now the TSA is ending up out on the highways uh, of America and uh, j just demanding that they get in our comfort zone. And now we've learned they're medicalizing police under federal grants to begin blood draws on highways. This is all about getting in our comfort zone. Yeah, I mean, you look at that and then you look and, and you ask a similar question um, uh, a few months ago, I'll say, uh, the, you know, the start of 2011, would we have believed that elected governments in Italy and Greece would be by now replaced by uh, technocrats, bankers who've never seen a ballot box um, in their life? Um, what's happening, and, and I've been talking about this for years, it's basically what will they take? So, and, and this is very, very relevant to, to what I'm seeing in, in Hawaii too. What will the public take? Keep pushing, keep pushing, and if you don't meet resistance, then push some more. No resistance, push some more. This is why people have got to understand that this is where we are now, is not where it's due to end. It's just the latest stage on the road to where they want it to end. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at what point are we going to resist in big enough numbers to make the resistance effective? Are we going to wait until um, there's a knock on the door and, and, and the truck's outside for the concentration camp? Are we gonna, do you think we might resist then? What about when they take your children away because there's, there's an emergency and force you to work um, uh, doing whatever job the government says that takes over your transport, that takes over the airwaves, that takes over the energy supplies, that takes over your home? At what point are we going to say enough in enough numbers to, to, to be effective and make a difference? Because that's the question people have got to ask. We have got to, I, I would suggest, Alex, move in, in, in terms of people that understanding of the conspiracy and awareness of the conspiracy from the point that most people once were, where they're completely ignorant of the fact there is a conspiracy. And then thanks to um, a lot of work by a lot of dedicated people, that information has started circulating in, in very, very uh, large amounts. And suddenly we've moved to another stage with a lot of people where they're now standing on the other side of the street and now they're aware enough of the game to watch their own prison being built. So, oh, yes, oh, and what, oh, I'll tell you what they're going to do next. Oh, I, I told you, I knew they'd do that now. We've moved from not knowing the prison is being built around us to seeing it being built around us, but it's still being built around us. So we need to cross the road and start engaging with it in large numbers. Get organized. You're right. Start You're right. The first massive campaigns of non-cooperation uh, with the system because it can't survive and it can't prosper and it can't work unless we have a, uh, it has our acquiescence. Well said. First, we've got to get people awakened, and we're deep into that process now. Then we have to get people to take action, and the system knows that we're entering that phase. But dealing with the issue of the awakening, when you were speaking about the takeover of infrastructure, the takeover of media, the shutting down of free speech, 
This is happening everywhere now. And what you were mentioning was the new executive order Obama just signed two yep. weeks ago. Similar things are being done in the Euro. They're appointing the leaders now. The Economist magazine, the Financial Times of London are saying it's good to have appointed leaders. So there's this attempt to now hide everything in plain view, but I don't see it working. Take the shooting of the poor Jewish children and the commandos in France. It came out day one, and now it's even the Jerusalem Post and Italian newspapers that the guy was working with French intelligence. He was protected. Somebody else videotaped it. The whole thing was staged to get Sarkozy in. I mean, now it isn't taking months for that to come out. It's immediately coming out. It's a false flag. It's a, yeah. and now it's coming out the Hatari militia weren't planning attacks, and it was all a setup. Uh, and the judge did the right thing and is saying, drop the charges. Uh, so so I, a crisis point is being reached, and I see the system trying now to kind of hide things in plain view. They've gone from denying it to hiding it in plain view. And I see some people out there that say, oh, there's no hope. Oh, the elite are invincible. I'm finding the opposite. I'm finding that when we do get off our knees, as your last book was called, that that all we have is power. All we do is win if we don't care about the ridicule. It's almost like a spiritual thing that if yeah. you give into the ridicule when you're called a conspiracy theorist for questioning known liars, th then somehow you know that like gives power to the other side. But when you know you're telling the truth and speak out against it and take action, it's having incredible things. I want to get into your experience in Hawaii, as you said before we went on air. You want to talk about this you know, point of nowhere to run. But before we do that, why do you think? Petraeus has come out and admitted what we've known for a decade, that all new appliances have tech, data over power line, listening, watching, Google watching, beyond 1984, cell phones, toasters, clock radios. They're, uh, they're now admitting life extension and life reversal that the elite have, that cloning for decades. Speak on those issues as we get into more. Why are they suddenly trying to hide it in plain view? Well, I think a, a, a number of reasons, um, and, and in, in a way they're almost always psychological, because this is a mind game. The few cannot control the many physically. They can do it. You can do it in small areas with tanks in the streets and soldiers at the door, but you can't do it to 7 billion people. There's not enough of you, even when you recruit your law enforcement from the target population, which there's so few of them, that's what they have to do. So it's a mind game. It's a psychological game. I think there's, there's, there's two things going on here. On, on, on one level, the more that they're telling us uh, it's happening, Happening, a, the more people are getting used to it that aren't aware of the implications. And also, the more they're saying, see, we have all the power. We can do what we like and on that level of psychology. But on another side to it, and uh, I agree with what you've just said in relation to this, um, I've been saying for years that there's a race going on. There's no question that the world is waking up. No question. I mean, last year I did 45,000 miles in the air, one and a half times around the world, country, continents, uh, uh, of many different and various kinds. This wake up is um, universal. It's, it's, it's planet wide. And they are now desperate to get the, the control structure in place. Um, before enough people uh, wake up, see it, and then cross that road I've just been talking about, cross the street, and, and bring the house of cards down. Because it is a house of cards, because we, you, humanity, uh, asleep humanity, are holding the, the, the house of cards together. That's why it's standing uh, up there. And so there's a race going on to get as much control, surveillance, uh, uh, external manipulation of our minds, which is what these, these smart meters and smart grids and all this other stuff is about, before um, the wake up is fatal to the control system. And so they're racing and racing and racing on. And what, what they're, they're doing, because they're racing on so fast, is they, they can't hide it anymore. They're, 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 they're having to bring it in so fast, they can't be uh, in any way subtle like they were before and, and covert and, and hiding it. So we're seeing it. Not only that, the more that people awaken, the more they see it, what they wouldn't see before, what these people can, could have got away with like 10, 20 years ago, 
um, which would have been off the radar of, of the vast majority of, of humanity, is now on the radar. You know, shows like this and and and, and people who have um, been putting this information out for, for for the last twenty years have what they're doing is they're bringing the subliminal. Um, to the conscious mind. And this is having a massive effect in people seeing things they couldn't see before. If you look at a subliminal advertisement, you won't see the subliminal messages and images in it uh, overwhelmingly. And then when somebody points out where they are, every single time you see that advert forever, the first thing you see are the subliminal images and messages you couldn't see before. Why? Because the pointing them out has brought them from the subliminal below threshold to the conscious mind, and now there's no hiding place for them. And this is another reason why it's becoming more blatant, because it is more blatant, but it's becoming more blatant to the observer because we're now seeing what we couldn't see before, we, where if you like, um, our radar is picking it up as it wasn't before. People are awake, they're now more conscious, so they, it's not just that it's more blatant, it's that we are now more awake. Now, now, expanding on that, you probably haven't had a chance to see it yet. For months, everybody was bringing this up to me, they'd read the books, it's a bestseller up there now with Harry Potter, The Hunger Games. Well, I finally saw it, David, and it is 100% Agenda 21 directly out of the UN Biological Diversity Assessments with a super high-tech elite of less than 1% in armored walled cities within controlled cities, monorail, exterminated 90% of the population, the rest of us living in feudal squalor, uh, basically kept at a subsistence level, and this high-tech false reality that they're building and gladiatorial games and human sacrifice of children. Now, we, you and I know studying this, that's all the ancient cultures, that's what this dark force builds, but people say, well, it's good, it's exposing it, because it's everything we've talked about to a T. But no, when the subconscious group sees it, it puts power over them by the system to be conditioned and acclimated because when something's subliminal, it, it gives the system power. But when you're conscious, it, it gives you power. And so it's almost a race for them to get everybody acclimated as they roll this out. Uh, but uh, I, I just wanted to get your take on the Hunger Games or to ask if you've heard of it or what you think of that statement. No, I've not, I've not, I've not seen it. because I've been traveling. But um, yes, absolutely. Uh, see, <laughs> once you start to realize what this reality is, a lot of things start to make sense because these people in the shadows, deeply in the shadows, they know what reality is and therefore they know how to manipulate it because they know how we're interacting with it. And if you look at the so-called um, solid physical world, it's not. I mean, quantum physics can, can point this out very simply. It's an illusory physical reality, which is actually holographic. Um, and the base foundation of this reality is waveform information fields, which are decoded through uh, the, what I call the biological computer, because that's how they see it. They, to, to, to these people, you talk about the mice and stuff, Alex, earlier. Um, to these people, the body is a piece of biological technology. And, and, and they can uh, manipulate it to decode a certain uh, amount of reality, but not a greater amount of reality. Sure. Just, as, just as in China, they firewall off the computer system so Chinese people can't see a, a vast amount of the Internet that the rest of us can see. Well, up to now, anyway. Um, so you can do it with the biological computer because the DNA, for instance, it's now becoming established is is a, a receiver transmitter of information and and if you can squeeze the uh, the frequency on which it, it, it receives and transmits you squeeze the reality that we are experiencing and where I'm going with this is so everything is um, a, a, an information field a a waveform information field including the body and uh, there's a wonderful story that uh, that really encapsulates just how illusory this reality is and what I'm saying here. That's told in a book by a guy called Michael Tolbert many years ago now called The Holographic Universe. And he uh, told the story of how um, his, his, his father had, had a party and had a stage hypnotist come along to do party tricks. And he had this guy sitting down called Tom. And uh, he said to the guy, um, when I bring you back to a waking state, you're not going to be able to see your daughter in the room. 
And so he, bring, he brings then the daughter, stands her right in front of the father. So he's looking in her belly. And he, he brings him back from the, apparently from the, the, the trance and says, um, can you see your daughter in the room, Tom? And Tom's looking around. He's looking in her belly. He's saying, no, I can't. Everyone's laughing. They can see her. He can't. So the hypnotist then goes behind the daughter, puts his hand in the small of her back uh, and says to uh, uh, the father on the other side of her, um, I'm holding something, Tom. What am I holding? And to him, it was obvious. He said, what are you holding? Watch. He says, there's an, ins there's, there's an inscription on the watch, Tom. Uh, what does it say? And he leaned forward, he read the inscription. His daughter's between him and the watch. Now, this is the reason. His daughter, like all of us, like everything in this reality, is a waveform information field. The, the, we decode it into a holographic physical reality, but actually it's a waveform information field. Now, if we don't do that, if we don't decode the information field into a holographic reality, then whatever we're not decoding doesn't exist in the, in the, in the realm of the conscious mind. So what the, the hypnotist has done is put a firewall in, um, in, in this guy's mind, in this sure. guy's brain, so it's not um, decoding the waveform energy field of the daughter. Therefore, he's not decoding it through into holographic reality. In his reality, she's not there. Therefore, he can see behind her. Everyone else in the room who's not been subject to that firewall is seeing her. And now, David. This is, a, this is a very important area, just very quickly, Alex. This means we have to look at symbolism and, and the, all these symbols put around us in another light, because these symbols are not just like, you know, people holding torches and eyes and stuff. They are information fields and they put them around us because they are speaking to us. They are exchanging information with us on a subconscious level. And, and it's a whole uh, psychological game to implant in all the ways that you've discussed. And I'm talking now They're program prompters. It, into the into the subconscious and then that filters through as a conscious thought a conscious response an emotional response which we take to be us and it's not it's 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 information that's been put in there for us to believe is our thoughts and emotions well i totally agree with you and you know, there's the analogy of the earth suit but if you really think about it, it's like the internet is the universe. The iPhone is the limited system that is experiencing that. Uh, that would be the body, or it's the way the cerebral cortex of the left and right lobe is our quote, you know, conscious focusing, but it's tying into our overall brain that is hundreds of times more powerful. And that's in 101, as you know, marketing. That's taught in college. Subliminals is just part of marketing for hundreds of years, but the general public is taught it's all a joke and doesn't exist. You know, it's a conspiracy theory that anything else exists or anyone is manipulating me. That is the hypnotist of the system telling people nothing exists outside of my voice. And we notice that uh, good hypnotists you know, will first call 10 people up, ask them questions. They can tell off cues who is suggestible. They'll send back you know, 80% of the people they call up, yeah. but keep a couple of them and then the person is willing to do it. But when you're born put in front of a television, when you're born with the chemicals in food and water, all of this happening, the sperm counts dropping, the testosterone, uh, the women all screwed up, the thyroid problems, uh, the overall brain waves lowering, the fertility, they are killing us. So how do the chemicals, which they're obviously increasing the levels of, we're exposing it, so now they're on the news going, yeah, lithium in the water, Prozac in the water, statins, that's now out in the open, chemtrails, aluminum, they're, in, they're obviously increasing the chemical bombardment how do you, I mean, how high will they turn it up? Will well, it work? It doesn't seem to be working. Well, uh, what we're, we're actually looking at, um, Alex, uh, is a, a situation which refers back to what we were talking about earlier, about the, um, the wake up. I've been talking now for 22 years about the fact that there is an energetic, let's call it, because it's true, information change going on in the waveform fabric of our reality. Um, I knew about it 20 years ago, and I was told that the effect it would have would be that we, I was going to see in my lifetime this great awakening of people um, to see a new vision of self in the world that they'd never seen before, and all that had been hidden was going to be brought to the surface by this information change. Now, 22 years ago, I mean, no sign. Look at it now. I mean, the, the very uh, the program we're talking on is an expression uh, of, of this 
uh, all that's been hidden coming to the surface. And, and look what we know now about how the world's manipulated. We didn't know five years ago, 10 years ago. It's fantastic. So they knew this was coming. And what they're doing is they're trying to mitigate the effect um, on people by destabilizing. If you take the, 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 the human biological computer and you, you, you relate it to a desktop computer, if you put viruses in a desktop computer, it is not going to decode the internet or anything like that in an accurate, powerful, effective way. It's going to cause mayhem. And what in effect, if you look at chemicals, uh, Alex, and, and, and the chemtrails and the aluminium, again, in the holographic realm, we see chemical substances. But if you go back to their base state, which is a waveform information field, if you could see that, it would be uh, incredibly disruptive. It wouldn't be harmonious. It would be uh, just a mess. It's jamming. It's electrochemical noise yeah. that, that at the electrochemical level fries us. So what does the system do? As, as in a way they're poisoning of everybody and, ki and, and cancer rates off the chart and all this, that's one of the biggest things waking people up is that enough folks are seeing their loved ones dead and dying to yeah. actually realize it's a soft kill operation. So this, this, is, this is what I was talking about years ago. The time would come, and my goodness me, are we there, when um, what had been covertly manipulated would have to break the surface. I mean, if they want to bring in this society that, you, that you've been talking about uh, you know, earlier in this chat, then we're going to have to see it at some point. And, and this is obviously uh, where we are. It's a point of danger because they're confident enough to break the surface or desperate enough because they're trying to do it before the wake up brings it down. Um, but it's also a wonderful opportunity because one of the, the greatest forms of human control is actually denial. And you look at any area of society from, from uh, New Age to the military, and you'll, you'll see lots and lots of people in complete denial of the obvious. Why? Because they don't want to face the fact that the world is as they'd rather it not be. So instead of facing that, let's kid ourselves that it's not like that, really. Denial. Now, what is happening now, absolutely uh, right, is that as this stuff comes into our face more and more blatantly, it's getting more and more difficult to deny it's happening. Uh, and therefore, more and more people are, are having to face the fact that actually it is happening. And, and it's no good hiding from the fact we've got to face it. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a time of great opportunity as well as a time of great a great challenge, you know, and I, I you know, I, I would speak at whole life expos and stuff like that when I first came to America. The only people interested in in me talking, you know, what would be called the the the, the, the new age uh, arena, and they'd put me on uh, right at the end of the day in the smallest room when everyone had gone home and there was no one there because I was a strange man talking about conspiracy. Uh, basically, it was love and light and and uh, uh, don't talk negative. Oh no, bad vibes. Well, what I've seen. Um, uh, is a massive transformation in so many of, of those people and that mentality by the sheer power of look at it, it's happening and it's impacting on your life that, that those people are now in, in large numbers, not one of the means, are starting to encompass the fact that, hey, you know, we can't just deny uh, uh, and, and sit in a, in a lotus position any longer and think think that's enough. We've well, got to David. engage with the system, and, and more and more people are. And it's those people. I mean, Christians would have nothing in, in common with, with New Ages, off, uh, overwhelmingly. Uh, Christians and uh, wouldn't have anything in, in common with uh, uh, Muslims and stuff like that. But this is what we need to do, surely. We put aside the belief systems and, and you know good luck to every everybody you have a, you should have the freedom to believe what you like and, and whatever you but let's put that aside and let's come together and let the fault lines of division uh, uh, fall away because we're we're in this together and unless we meet it together then we'll be divided and ruled well that was my next point that i wanted to bring up to you is that we see presidents, you know, high level execs in major corporations like Goldman Sachs saying I can't do this anymore. It's totally criminal. We're here to hurt people, rip off our clients. We call them scum, we call them muppets, puppets that they manipulate. Uh, you see all these people coming out. I mean, there are so many prominent people in the system, genetic engineers making 3 million a year. They quit and say, we're sterilizing people, it's a chemical weapon, a bioweapon, don't, don't eat it. 
as people at the upper echelons, not the very top of the pyramid, but very close, realize that this system means death and destruction, their basic human instinct for survival and decency kicks in, and I'm just seeing an explosive awakening within the elite itself, or, or the highest levels that serve the system. Are you beginning to see that as well? Yeah, I mean, what I understood about this uh, information waveform change is that the most open, the less densely caught in the box, would be touched by it first. But eventually it would start to touch people who were really it's deeply in the box and deeply in the system. And I'm seeing people now, Alex, who I would have said a very short time ago, never him, never her, not in this lifetime. They'll never look at this in anything but disdain and dismissal. And I'm seeing them now looking at it seriously. So there is something big time going on. And another great thing about um, the, the conspiracy researchers and the conspiracy communicators of information is we are actually decompartmentalizing the blooming system because of course the system's compartmentalized so you you're only given as much information about what you're doing to do what you're doing and no more so you don't see how it fits to everything else and and, and they've gone along in ignorance and all that stuff this is why so many uh, top secret technologies are actually bit different parts are made by different people and only the people that put it together at the end knows know what it is and what it's going to be used for and 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 what the this information that's been pouring out more and more effectively year after year after year he's doing, and I'm seeing this in, in, in science, with scientists, with people in the system, is it's decompartmentalizing because it, the, the system, because it's saying to them, see, this is what your contribution is doing because it's going connecting to this contribution and this contribution and what you think you're doing in, inno in innocence is actually causing this. And so, you know, the system is, starting to unravel and that's why i i feel this sense of of panic we must push on we must push on we must push on and when you do that you make mistakes and you um you, you make it even more blatant uh, what you're doing so this is a time of great challenge but i tell you what mate um i'm looking at it now and when I uh, see where we were just a few years ago, um, we are making very, very rapid progress. I agree with you. Now, how do you see the psychological warfare chiefs that are trying to create this total false reality, this artificial habitat for us, as, as those of us here in the global planetary spaceship zoo begin to notice that this is a Truman show? Yes, exactly. How is the system going to strike back? Because we've talked about our numbers going from maybe 1% 10 years ago, knowing the Federal Reserve is private, to over 90% in polls. So there's different degrees of awakening. Yeah. Uh, but, but sure, there's 30, 40% that are really starting to be awake. But there's 30% or so that never will wake up because they'll just decide out of cowardice to join with the system because they think it's going to win. And then you've got that other 30% or so that are just so into the system and so drugged and poisoned, they don't have the IQ to wake up. So, so how do you see those that are mercenaries are going to serve the evil to the end because they think it's you know they worship at the altar of dark power? How are they going to try to blame uh, us that are actually waking folks up for what uh, for problems that are coming? Because more and more, I'm hearing. You're going to destroy the stock market. You're going to cause problems by what you're doing. Just go along with it. Or I'm seeing people who denied world government was being set up. Now they've suddenly said, OK, world government's the answer. And OK, it's all real. But those of you that oppose it, you're the problem. I mean, because obviously what I'm trying to say is the system's got a lot of tricks up their sleeves. What do you see as their counter strike option against us? Well, I mean, I think they'll try to demonize uh, people um, communicating this information ever more effectively in any way they can. A, a desperate is the word that, that comes to mind. The the key for those who are, are doing this is for it to go in one ear and out the other, uh, because uh, it, the more they are attackers, the more they seek to undermine us, the more that they are aware of the effectiveness of, of what's going on in terms of exposing them. So it, it's a compliment in so many ways. And, you know, 
Like they always, just interrupt, they always tried to ignore us at first. Now yeah. when they've got 15 shows on at any one time, saying 9-11 truthers are crazy, everybody instinctively goes, wait a minute, if they're making this big a deal out of it, and this media has been caught lying millions of times, I mean, people instinct, when the system's out of bullets, yeah. and now when they attack you, it's a badge of courage, what do they do next? Exactly. Well, the thing is that I'm, I've had so many people come to my uh, information in recent years because of the, all the attacks on me and things like the, the British media. They're thinking, well, what, what's this guy saying that's causing this? And, and uh, so it, it's actually counterproductive in the end, because the, the more they attack you, the, the more people say, well, he must be saying something right. I'm hearing that again and again. It's gone from years and years ago. Yeah, he's a nutter to well, he must be saying something right to get all this abuse. Uh, and in, in a way, they are running out of bullets. Uh, as long as we keep moving forward and, and refuse to uh, to bow to this nonsense that, that, that's thrown in our direction, then the, the, more, the more they'll r run out of bullets, because this is the point I want to make. Um, we are consciousness um, having an experience in a, through a biological computer called the body mind, which allows us to experience a certain range of frequencies that we call the the physical world. Now, the range, the stadium in which these people are running their control system is body mind, and it has a frequency range. Once you open your mind to consciousness, I mean, what Christians would call the soul, and many other different religions and beliefs call it different things, but the greater self, spirit, that which near-death experiences are experiencing where they leave the body and, 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 and the reality is completely changed and it's much more expansive and everything becomes possible and, and it's, it's amazing the way they describe it. Um, once you do that, that power starts to come through the, the body, the body-mind computer. The, the, the control system can't deal with that because it's it, it's not in its uh, field of frequency to deal with it. It's not, it doesn't have the power to deal with it. When you look at the system, Alex, you look at the society and the way it's structured, it, it's systematically structured to do this, to pull our point of attention, i.e. our um, sense of perspective, who we are and what's happening in the world, into the five senses, into their stadium. This is what they're, they're manipulating. Um, when we're in... in um, five sense reality alone, then we, we are playing away from home. And you, we can only perceive self and the world and world events through the five senses. Well, we here's an example, David. Uh, they, as you know, for over a hundred years, they've done scientific studies the world over that there is a sixth sense stronger yeah. in some people than others that, that, you know, you're walking through your family ranch, uh, you feel someone looking at you, you turn, you walk 200 yards, somebody's in a deer stand on a hill looking at you, you sense them. You're in a restaurant, yeah. you feel someone looking at you, you turn around, there they are. It's real, and in my life, whenever I've gone with my instinct, my gut, it's yeah. always right. When I try to go with the intellectual or whatever, you know, that's hit or miss. And bringing up the Hunger Games, you talk about the stadium. They have false stadiums that are so big, it's an artificial sun rising and setting. They've got yeah. floating UN craft with peacekeepers from the technological central government that plays the 12 zones off against each other. And it's all about how they're creating this false reality for people. And there they are throwing it in everyone's face. Tell folks what's happening, because you before we went on air here, you said, be sure, uh, Al, Alex, you know, and bring up what's happening in Hawaii, uh, because you were using it as an example of nowhere to run. Uh, people tried to keep you from speaking. Uh, yeah, tell us what's happened there. Yeah, uh, well, just very quickly, you know, what you just said there about um, the intellect and intuition, that, uh, that's absolutely key to, to what I've been saying here, because the intellect operates within the body mind biological computer and therefore because it's such a low level of awareness compared with consciousness soul whatever you want to call it it has to work things out whereas you you know you've just talked about it when we have an intuitive feeling it's a knowing it's a knowing. It's, you, you don't have to work it out or explain it. You just know. Why? Because that's coming from, from that which is beyond this uh, manipulated reality. And, and, and that can take you through the maze 
um, uh, in uh, the, the world that's been created for us that the intellect has got no chance of doing. And that's that's the way home, that for me. All I've done in the last 22 years is when um, uh, I made a decision 22 years ago that if my head and my intuitive knowing was at, were, were, were uh, um you know, at war with each other. I was going with my intuition, and that's all I've done ever since. And eventually, the head and, and, and the intuition, the the intellect and the the heart, come together. So the head starts to serve uh, consciousness rather than be the the governor of it. In terms of um, uh, this intuitive knowing, by the way, this is what the system's terrified of. In their own writings, they say the only thing that could uh, disrupt our plans is maverick people. And maverick people are those that come from intuitive knowing rather than programmed mind. But in terms of Hawaii, yes, um, Hawaii is such a, a stunningly beautiful place. And so many people who aren't born here um, uh, have, have come to live to escape, to escape the, the rat race, to escape the system and, and to live a, 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 an alternative lifestyle with organic food and, 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 you know, healthy lifestyles and all the yoga and all that stuff. Um, um, but because this conspiracy does not have a location that it operates in, it wants to take the world over. There comes a point where you start to realize there is nowhere to escape to. Because if we don't turn around and face this and deal with it together, then we can we can uh, escape for a while to some idyllic place or some archipelago or whatever. But eventually, th there'll be a knock on the door. And what we're seeing here now um, is first of all, there's the, you know, so many people, great, I, I, I love it, I have the organic food and, and, and the healthy lifestyle. But while they're doing that, they're washing the organic food often with the, the, the water supply that's impregnated with chemicals from Monsanto and others coming from the, uh, the put on the crops going into the water table. Goodness knows what's what's dropping uh, on the food and what's being breathed in and what's in the in the, in the water in the sea from Fukushima. We, we don't know the scale of that yet. Uh, and then there's the chemtrails that you, you see uh, over Hawaii, which is dropping the aluminium and the barium on the organic food and all this stuff. Then you've got um, Pearl Harbor over at Honolulu, the, the, the major naval and um, air force base, which means that any conflict with China pulls uh, uh, Hawaii into the front line uh, of that in terms of location uh, and also the military uh, operation here. And where I'm going with this is, you know, you can only run for a while and then you you, ha you realize actually you're at the edge of the cliff and there's nowhere to run and we need to start to have the courage and have the uh foresight to see that we're not going to run away from this because it will catch up with us we need to all turn around and if we're going to run at all run straight at it because when we do it will start running you know i've um you know, I used to be a, a, a soccer player years ago. And what, what you see sometimes, uh, you see a little a little guy, midfield player with a ball, not very big, very, very, very slight of body. And in front of him are big, hairy defenders, all big, strong, impregnable. And most people, uh, you know, they'd say, oh, we're not getting through there. So they'd pass the ball square or pass it here, get it back and go nowhere. What these some of these little uh, uh confident little midfield players do is they get the ball and they run straight at them. Now, these big hairy defenders that looked impregnable have got to deal with them. And they drop the shoulder right, drop their shoulder left. Now, the big hairy defenders are now having to react to them. And, and what do we do now? Suddenly, this impregnable uh, uh, wall of people is in disarray. Exactly. You've got to stop running. Do. Run at it. You've got to stop running and start engaging them, and then you take the momentum, and now they're on the defense because yes. they're attacking us, and so it's defensive to go on the offense, and the universe respects that as well, and that's how you gain converts to liberty and the awakening is not being you know, pensive and afraid and apologizing, but by being bold, because these are bold times. And, and David, I totally agree with what you're saying. So many people call me and they go, oh, this is real. I checked it out. It's true. How do I hide and protect myself? 
Or how do I get a bunch of guns and food and just wait for the end? And it's not bad to have guns and food to protect yourself, but that's a small insurance backup. The real insurance is engaging aggressively and not acting scared because you're the good guy. You're the good lady. You're the people out there warning people. You've got an incredibly important mission. And when you do go at it from that perspective, because that's what I've always done, that's when you have the real success. People call me and say, well, how do I get out of the system and not have them track me? The point is you say, hey, criminals, I know you're tracking me because you're crooks and you are afraid of what we know about you. It's not that I'm scared you're tracking me. It proves that you are criminal scum. People say, man, you must be paranoid. No, I'm not paranoid. I'm aware. People say, well, don't be negative. No, I'm incredibly positive by facing the facts so we have a real chance of addressing this and dealing with it. And this is people- such an important point. This is such an important point. I'm sick of hearing people say, oh, you're frightening people. Oh, no, it's negative. Knowledge is never negative. Knowledge always empowers, no matter what knowledge it is, because it's giving you a greater fix on the, on the situation we're facing. I tell you what's negative: ignorance. Ignorance is negative. That's how we got into this uh, this uh, situation. And people who say, "Oh, it, it's negative," or yeah, "Well, you know, get a grip of yourself," because. Um, if we are going to be frightened even of the information circulating, then we've got no chance at all. And the, the point you were making earlier, Alex, a few minutes ago about the, the you know wait, waiting for the for the end. Now this is a, this is a, a point. Now we can um, stockpile food and sit there waiting for the knock on the door. Or we can start going at the system and the knock on the door will never come because the system won't be there to do it. This is what we need to do. We, we've got to start running at them, running at the system, ceasing to cooperate with it, ceasing to be intimidated by it. And we'll be amazed. At, you know, you, you, you know the, the power that this system has over humanity? It's persuading humanity. He has power over them. It's a mind trick, a mind game. And when you run at these people, you realize actually it is just a figment of people's imagination. The power is not there. They just want us to believe it because then we'll acquiesce to them. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, Alex Jones, David Icke, you know, they're saying we've got hope. We don't have hope. And, and, you know, the information they're putting out can be accurate on issues, but this idea that we don't have hope and don't have power in yeah. my own life, I don't have the skills that a lot of other people have, uh, but I've reached 15 million people a week, literally through XM, AM and FM, internet, YouTube, all of it. 15 million is a conservative number. And, and, and I know there are people smarter, more talented, everything, but I, my whole life, have always run at them. When somebody challenges me, I don't understand reverse just because it doesn't feel right. And, and I, if we can just get people to realize, I'm always looking for other leaders. I'm always looking for people to build up, you know, to go at the system. And, and, and people are always thinking just because I'm there or you're there or whatever, we're there, Ron Paul, whatever, that somehow, G. Edward Griffin, that, oh, I'm glad you're there and I'm glad you guys are. No, no, we're here to, to wake up those that aren't awake yet. Once you're awake, we, we need the next Alex Jones, the next David Icke, to be a leader and then find the next person because it's through awakening millions and then getting hundreds of thousands of the leaders that are there to really take it to the next level that we cannot be stopped. And I've always known that's my mission is to reach out to others, to then have them activate like ripples in a pond to get the chain reaction of awakening going. And that chain reaction, I can feel it, has already begun. And the system is going to do desperate, desperate things to try to block it. David Icke, thank you so much for the time. DavidIcke.com. People want to find out about your speaking engagements, uh, your last book, the new book coming out. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that. And then I have one last question for you. Well, the, the new book's called Remember Who You Are, um, and it's it's a multi-level uh, book uh, about the nature of reality, the nature of the, the human psyche, and and hard names, dates, places, um, uncovering of, of what's happening in in the world in terms of of, of daily uh, world events, and what the gender is, and all that stuff. But it's called Remember Who You Are for the very reason, Alex, that I, we were talking about uh, in this chat. We need to remember that you are not Alex Jones and I'm not David Icke. They are names for our experience. 
Um, we are not our names. We are not our job. We are not our income bracket. We are not our race. We are consciousness having those experiences. And when you remember that, then this incredible power uh, comes into your life, which is just the greater you expressing itself because you've opened your mind and let it in. And then what we call miracles become possible, including what many people would see as a miracle currently, which is bringing this control system down. But it will come down. It will come down. Consciousness will bring it down because it is built on mind. And consciousness and mind are like the sumo wrestler and the two stone weakling. Um, and uh, the um, the event in Hawaii on Saturday is uh, in on Maui, and I'll be talking for for nine hours over um, over the day um, with about fifteen hundred uh, images, connecting the dots across all these things, um, and. Um, it's so important now that, that, that people um, stop um, seeing things like love and uh, spiritual things uh, as concepts. They have to become actions. You know, if you are at the side of a river and a child falls in the river, you don't sit on the bank sending out love to the child, do you? <laughs> you jump in the river and express love by pulling them out. Well, we need to take it from the theory to the action, and then we'll get somewhere. Beautifully said. A uh, question I get constantly is, it, it, it's twofold. Here, here are the two questions. Why are you, Alex Jones, David Icke, Ron Paul, still alive, people like that? Why are you still alive, A, and B, at the very highest level of human control on this planet? And of course, the elite believes they're interfacing with these dark entities. Uh, and that's what all the religions say. But the point is, and then when you say it, though, you're kooky and bad because you have a different angle on it, uh, according to the mainstream media. Why are we still alive, A? And then B, at the human level, what is the highest secret society order? Who is the most evil person on Earth? Well, on the second, I, I, don't, I don't think we know because they don't put themselves in public display. I mean, I think at the core of the core of the core, where I say they directly interact with these entities that are described in every ancient culture and every religion has them, demons, archons, uh, uh, jinn, whatever you are. They, they don't put themselves on public display, but the House of Rothschild is absolutely right up there. Um, and uh, they are a major, major uh, influence. Um, and what they've done brilliantly through the 20th century to now is taken the in your face control. They've increased their control, but they have hidden it so that the Rothschilds are a kind of a faded force. They're not. They're right up there. And I love the thing, Alex, about uh, are we still, uh, why, why are you still alive? I mean, what ultimate defeatism? People said to me over the years, um, if you were genuine, you, you'd be dead. All right. So the only genuine uh, conspiracy researcher is a dead one, right? So we, we, we don't have the feeling that actually we can, we can take the power to take the system on and be effective against the system because we don't think the system is, is all bloody powerful. No, no. Oh, no. No, no. It is all powerful. Therefore, you would be dead. They wouldn't let you do this. Well, there are other forces at work as well. You know, we, we, we look out um, in this tiny frequency range we call visible light, which is barely, barely uh, you know, uh, existing. Um, and we think that everything we see and the human form on Earth is the only one that exists and it's the only reality. There are multiple infinite realities. Uh, religions talk about them in their own way. And, and there are many, many um, levels of reality that are working to bring an end to what's happening in our in our reality in our in our world, and and they are protecting uh, people who who are, are willing to to do what is necessary to expose all this and make a difference. They are protecting uh, them, um, and and therefore it is not as easy as oh we saying something we don't like bang bang. It's not, uh, and you know. We've got to get over this defeatism that only a, a dead researcher is a genuine researcher. See, he was telling you the truth. He's, they've killed him now. I mean, where are we going with this? If that's what we believe and that's what we feel, well, put your hands out and I, let's get the chains on now because it's over. Well, I was about to say, this is a cognitive dissonance, Cass Sunstein type idea. 
that we can't win. Anybody who's successful is bad. You're, you're yeah. just saying humanity is, is crap when history shows us the opposite. And, it, and it's only, uh, tyrants only flourish when good men and women do nothing. And, and what are people saying who are saying there's nobody good who's standing up? They're saying they're crud as well. Because I always say, okay, let's just say I'm bad, which I'm not. I mean, I'm pure of heart. I, I'm not a perfect person, but I really do love people. I really do want to have a better world. I want our species to go to the stars. I, I mean, I, I, I'm a fan of man. I'm a fan of humanity. I believe in humanity. And then these people just say, oh, no, you, you couldn't be successful, uh, you know, without the New World Order. Okay, fine then. I'm bad. Don't use the fact that I'm bad as an excuse for you to not take action. You know you're supposedly good, and everybody else is a bad New World Order. Come on, stand up and take action. Instead of just spending all day attacking everybody else that's trying to do something. And then you find out, oh, they're the operatives. They're the cognitive dissidents. They're the COINTELPRO. And the good news is people have gotten wise to that. And I've seen yeah. all the attacks I've gone through, you've gone through, and others have gone through, has actually just become advertising for us. I mean, in a way, the enemy is stupid. I mean, I guess they're fighting an old game where people were on, in a trance state, but people are not in a trance state anymore. A at least those that are awake aren't. And the folks that are still in a trance, I'm sorry, they're not even on the game board here. They, it just, they're spectators. I mean, I'm in the arena and I have come to wake some people up. The thing that people need to understand more than anything else is all this conspiracy, all this enslavement. It is not a bloody game. It's real. And if we don't uh, focus on that and focus our lives on it, we're going to regret it for the rest of our lives. David, David, let me interrupt you just for a moment, and then I want you to continue on this line, because it's not that I'm mad at my detractors. Uh, again, they actually help us get the word out in a weird way. That's how the universe works. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. But I want them to develop to the next level and I see them more as like hobbyists who think that if they spend all their time critiquing other people who are awake and involved, that somehow it's like a scalp. That if they've bashed David Icke or they've bashed Alex Jones or they've told us, you know, that, oh, they're really, a, a, you know, an agent or they're scum, when obviously you're not an agent and I'm not an agent. If you have any discernment, you know that. The globalists hate what we're doing. That that somehow it makes them big men and women. And it, it just makes me so sad for them. So it, it hurts me, but not in a way that they think it's hurting me. It's so pathetic. Briefly, your comment on that. Well, yes. I mean, there's some great uh, information gets circulated on various uh, forums, but so often um, it, they just become a, a vehicle for many people of, of hurling abuse in all directions. And, you know, the, the word hobby, I think, is very significant because it is like a hobby. It is like an add on to people's lives. And it, we're dealing with a situation where it has to become the focus of people's lives. If, if anyone's got children and grandchildren, if you, and you say, oh, I just want to do b the best for my children. Well, th this has got to be the focus of your life then, if, if that's your, your motivation. Not an add-on, not an, oh, it is slightly interesting, and certainly not um, just um, winning points over, I see it all the time. See, I know more about this conspiracy than you do. It says bong bong postings, or, you know, or whatever on a, on a, on a forum. Uh, and they're just uh, playing at it. It's a playground at that level. And we need adults, not children involved. And uh, I just ask them, please look around you. Look at what's happening. Stop being uh, a juvenile and Start being an adult so you can actually make a difference instead of it exactly. being just a, 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 an add on to your life and a bit of fun and a bit of bit of a hobby. This is not a game. <laughs> this is real. And uh, if we don't treat it as such and focus on it as such and support each other as such, then we're going to regret it for a very long time. Exactly. I mean, uh, pediatric cancer, some of them are up 10,000 percentage points. I go out in public and there's kids with shaved heads with, with chemo injectors on their arms everywhere. I mean, they're murdering us. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? I'm here trying to wake people up. And 
I know a lot of them are operatives, but others are just screwed up people. And it's like sick. It's like, wow. Yeah. You know, we've got, yeah. this is real. I'm putting my life on the line. You are. We know how, this is not a game. I got chills when you said that. Truer words have never been said. Yeah, I, I mean, and, you know, all you can do is try to get these people to see what they're doing. You know, they, they, they think they're so informed, uh, a lot of them. See, I know more than you do. Well, how informed are you? Let me ask a question. Apart from making uh, attacks on people on, on forums and stuff like that, what do you actually do to make a difference? Because if you really knew what was happening and what is planned, then your focus would be on making a difference, not lambasting someone and winning brownie points in some intellectual bloody nonsensical game that they play. You would see that we have to we have to focus on this and make it the focus of our lives. David, so if you're not doing that, don't tell me you understand the conspiracy because you clearly don't. Exactly. I mean, I'm throwing everything I got against him and I feel like dirty rags that I'm not doing more. And then when I see them in the infighting and all of it, it makes me so sad because we need their energy to fight the, 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 uh, the, uh, the darkness. That's what we're going to call this piece tonight. Uh, David Icke, this is not a game. Uh, very powerful. The thing is that when people are in ignorance of what's happening in the world and what the agenda is and where they want it to go, I have some sympathy when they do nothing because they do not believe there's anything to be done. When I see people who often for not their own efforts, but the efforts of others have seen what um, the agenda is, seen what uh, they want to uh, impose upon the world, see what they're imposing now, and their only response is to attack and undermine those that are putting their head above the trench and, and, and making a difference. Well, I say to those people, go and find your children and grandchildren, look them in the eye and justify, given what uh, world they're going to live in if, we, if, we, if, they, if it reaches the end that they want, um, far beyond what we've got now even, far, far beyond. And you tell, you justify to them attacking and trying to undermine, often exploit, those who are trying to make a difference. That ignorance, therefore no action, I can understand. Uh, knowing what's uh, at least a, a good part of what's happening and then seeking to undermine those who are trying to expose it, that turns my stomach. And one day, one day when they wake up, it will turn their own. Yeah, it's bad luck. My gut just tells me those people have no idea what they're buying into. No, uh, because when you know the truth and decide to join evil, that is the ultimate sin. David Icke, our interviews just get better and better over the years. And I know you're a busy man. I appreciate you joining us every few months. And Pleasure. I look forward to having you back on soon, davidike.com. I, I have to say, I've been saying this every interview in the last few years, but this is our best interview so far. I mean, be honest in your gut. Don't you feel like this is the best interview so far? Well, I think, Alex, that what we what what's happening is is we're all learning more, we're all becoming more aware, and therefore, you know, you become uh, closer and closer to to understanding what needs to be said and what needs to be done, and you know, we must go on doing that. You know, I, I see people over the years at various conferences, and I, I've seen them make presentations, and ah, that's very nice, yes, that's interesting. Thing, yeah. And then I've seen them 10 years later making the same presentation. I'm, I'm thinking, what have you been doing? The cutting edge has to constantly move, and, uh, and it's moving very, very fast now. It's great, great time to be alive. It certainly yeah. is. Well, David, thank you for the time, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Cheers, Alex. All right, folks, there goes David Icke, uh, almost an hour long and uh, just, just just amazing. And you, you can say what you want about David Icke, but he gets people thinking and he's doing a lot of good. And that's what we need. He is good at getting people outside the box. And I ask, you know, any critics out there who aren't in the arena, what have you done to wake people up? Because we know this world is going in the wrong direction. Great job of the crew. Another extended edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Lord willing, we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central. And I'll see you on the radio, 11 a.m. Central.
for the radio show, InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. Until then, bon voyage.